Does it work? Looks good. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, that's the title again, Quantum Modularity from Three Manifolds. And uh, in this talk, uh, what am I doing? In this talk, uh, I'll discuss a uh, relationship between two types of objects, uh, a three manifold invariance that's called a Z hat on the one hand and quantum modular forms on the other hand. So um, then um, to tell this story, well, there's a, a few subjects that's involved and we'll discuss, well, this is this, this is not reskilled properly, right? The slide. Okay, now it's better. So uh, we will discuss the number theory of quantum modular forms and of course the topology of three manifolds and uh, this topological invariance will have a physical origin obviously and then um, and also they will be related to uh, representations of um, interesting non-rational vertex algebras. So then uh, depending on what is your favorite topic, you might have different motivations to be interested in this. Um, you might be interested in quantum modular forms because it holds promise uh, to capture a certain natural structure beyond modular forms. Or um, you might like Z hats because it's a Q series invariance for closed three manifolds and uh, which you can then categorify and uh, pretty much an analogous to the story of not invariance. Or you might care about uh, the interpretation of this invariant as a supersymmetric uh, index, uh, since they come from uh, interesting two-dimensional supersymmetric quantum field theories. And I will tell you something about these, uh, the physics of these theories and uh, 3D, 3D correspondence in M theories. Or you might like the connection between this topic, this 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 object and. Uh, characters of uh, interesting vertex algebras because these vertex algebras well they're um, interesting and 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 quite new types of uh, um, non-rational theories okay so uh, this talk will be based on past and ongoing work uh, with um, a wonderful set of collaborators uh, so these are uh, Sumon Chung who is a uh, postdoc at Rutgers right now, Francesca Ferrari in uh, CISA, and Sergey Kukov, Sarah Harrison, and Boris Fogging, and uh, Gabriel Skuroy, who is my PhD student at the moment. So I think this nice set of collaborators also represents the different expertise and motivations uh, <laughs> that's involved in this work. And um, so uh, we will start by telling you about um, uh, the background of this story. And uh, let's start with telling you what uh, quantum modular forms are. So um, in one sentence, these are uh, functions defined on the rationals, which have some type of uh, uh, modular-like properties. So uh, that's one sentence and you can now decide to take a nap for 10 minutes and come back, but then uh, you will miss a lot of fun stuff. For, so <laughs> for the rest of us, uh, let's actually discuss what they are. And um, so to discuss what they are, they're generalizing module forms. So what are module forms? These are, of course, holomorphic functions defined on the upper half plane. And we all know that the upper half plane has SO2Z symmetry acting as a, a, a fractional linear transformation. And from the SO2Z uh, point of view, the upper half plane has a natural boundary, consists of all the rational numbers together with the I infinity point up there. And these are called the cusp of SO2Z, which is acted upon by SO2Z in a transitive way. And uh, so, what's, uh, what qualifies a function, a holomorphic function on the upper? A plane uh, to be a module form is that, well, given the weight, which we take to be a half integer or uh, integer, and then we define the uh, uh, modular transformation of 
this weight, which is just replacing tau by the new tau and a multiplied function with the measure factor that's determined by the weight. And it's called the modular form if this function is actually invariant uh, under such a weight W modular transformation. So uh, we all know that there are many generalizations of this uh, simple definition, including, 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 including non-trivial G uh, characters in the transformation uh, uh, rule, or to make a vector valued function so that will correspond to a multi-dimensional representation of the SO2Z uh, group, or to let this function be uh, non-holomorphic, et cetera. So a very familiar example would be the so-called theta functions. And uh, we all know, for instance, this one dimensional theta function is a weight one half uh, uh, modular form. And uh, in this talk, we'll also uh, care about a, 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 a one dimensional uh, lattice rescaled by a factor such that uh, the discriminant group of this lattice has two M elements. And now uh, we can define the usual a uh, 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 theta function given by an element in this discriminant group in the usual way, or uh, more relevant, even more relevant for us is its close cousin. So it will be a wave three half um, uh, module form. And the difference is that we put a K factor in the summons. Um, so this is sometimes called the unary theta function, if you like. And, um, so let's just remember that within the world of module form, theta function is really just a small part of it. But it's a nice part of it, a particularly simple and nice part of it, if you want. But there are many, many other module forms which are not theta functions. And especially, we're often interested in the behavior of a modular form uh, when we approach the boundary of the upper plane. So uh, this is sometimes called the radial limit where we just approach a rational uh, number from the uh, from the upper half plane. So in this way, a uh, holomorphic function in, uh, taken a limit like this defines a function on the rationals. And so this is sometimes called the radial limit because in the Q variable where Q is e to the two pi i tau, this is approaching a root of unity from within the unit disk. And later we will see in the current context, uh, uh, we uh, have a Q series invariant for three manifolds and we want to relate it to the transimers, the WRT invariants that we know. And the way to do this is indeed to take the radial limit where the rational is one over the effective level of the transimers. But that's for later. <laughs> so if this <clears throat> function is a modular form, by taking the radial limits, you get a function um, defined on the rational satisfying uh, the modular behavior, namely the difference uh, of the function itself and its uh, modular image is zero. Okay, so this is what we want to uh, generalize, this zero. So how do we generalize it? So let me just quote the <clears throat> 2010 paper by Don Zaguer in which he defined the notion of a quantum modular forms. He said, well, here neither of the properties which are required of classical modular forms, which are analyticity and gamma covariance are reasonable things to require. The first is bad because uh, we are talking about rational, so we only have a discrete topology. And the second thing is bad because uh, uh, SO2Z acts transitively, so you will be led to a trivial definition if you uh, require gamma covariance. <clears throat> so then he said that instead we require the failure of one precisely offsets the failure of the other. In other words, uh, you want to have a function defined on the rationals such that uh, the failure of uh, modular uh, invariance, namely captured by this H function, has some property of continuity and analyticity. So that's uh, what he defined as the quantum modular forms. But in fact, all the examples we encounter uh, in this current context uh, have even more properties. So uh, that qualifies these functions to be what uh, Don called the <clears throat> a strong quantum module form. So this is an object with, 
a stronger and more interesting structure. So instead of a function uh, <clears throat> mapping Q to C, we have a function that uh, associates to each element, to each rational number, formal power series of Q, uh, formal <clears throat> power series over C, such that, well, the same equation, well, H function is this, holds as an identity between uh, countable collections of formal power series. So um, to make connection to the, to the uh, three manifold invariants, this power series uh, can be viewed as uh, closely related to the semi-classical uh, expansion of the Jones islands, or to be uh, related to the Osuki series in the topology uh, literature. Uh, but again, that's for later. So here I'm done with the definition. So are there interesting examples of the, of the definition? Otherwise, it would be a stupid definition. Um, so uh, uh, especially, yes, there are interesting examples, especially uh, mock module forms and the so-called four theta functions uh, satisfy uh, the definition and are examples of one module forms. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you what four theta functions are, what module forms are, give some examples, and then explain why there are examples of uh, quantum modular forms and why we should care about them. Okay. So uh, to describe uh, mock module form and four theta function, we have to introduce some integrals of module forms, and these are called Eichler integrals. So they come in uh, two uh, different types, and one is holomorphic, denoted by a tilde. The other is non-holomorphic, which is denoted by a star. So basically, we just literally integrate uh, this uh, module form G, and uh, with some measure factor that's determined again by the weights uh, thrown into the integrand. And uh, it's actually easy to see why such integrals satisfy the condition of, module, uh, of quantum modular forms, namely the modular differences have some analyticity properties. So you can see that by just uh, doing a small computation and then uh, by the end of the computation, you see the last line. So uh, the different modular difference is just a period integral. So for instance, uh, when take w equal three or four, then this is just a polynomial in tau, then of course it has a, a nice analyticity property in tau, okay? So that's not so mysterious. So what are the examples of them? So take the case of a holomorphic Eichel integral and take your g to be your favorite theta function of weight three half, for instance, then uh, what you get is uh, something that's all that 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 almost equals to a, a usual uh, uh, theta function, namely the factor here q k sorry in the in the summand is replaced by just a plus or minus sign. But without this sign, this uh, theta tilde is just the usual theta function. That's why it's called a false because it's pretending very hard to be a theta function, but it's not. It's the Eichler integral of a weight three half theta function. Okay. So that's an example. Now we take uh, a, a fun example. And now we take take a look at the other version of the Eichler integral, namely the non-holomorphic version. And that's going to lead to the definition of modular forms, uh, the modern definition, uh, according to Zweifisch. And this is a weird definition in some sense because uh, you say that the, it, the you say that the function is a holomorphic function on the upper half plane is a mock modular form if you can find an other um, another modular form I call G. Um, which is called the shadow, uh, because you don't see that by staring at F. 
but the definition <laughs> depends on the existence of such G. So if you can find such a G and then you compute the non-holomorphic actual integral of it and subtract it from the holomorphic function, and then you get to another non-holomorphic function called F hat, which is sometimes called the uh, completion of F. And if that behaves like a modular form, then you call it the original function, not modular form. Okay, so it's a little bit convoluted, but uh, it's uh, that's that's actually a very nice definition, I think. But anyhow, that's the definition which I will use, uh, which everybody uses these days. And uh, it's also actually easy to see why mock module forms lead to the definition of uh, some uh, quantum module forms. Because since uh, the completion, which is the difference of the two, uh, behaves like a modular form. So the uh, modular difference of the F function, the mock modular form, is the same as the modular difference of the non-holomorphic actual integral. And so as we said, that this modular difference is again given by a period integral and have manifest an ellipticity property in the tau variable and hence satisfies the definition of the modular property. Okay. So I hope the message is clear why mock module forms are examples of quantum module forms in this uh, sense. So are there nice uh, examples of mock module forms? And the answer is yes. So for instance, uh, module forms are without a mock are trivial examples of mock module forms because the shadow is just zero. You don't need anything to subtract anything and it already behaves like a module form, so you're done. And another nice set of examples is the examples of Ramanujan called the mock theta functions. And they're nice uh, for one million different reasons that I won't talk about today. But let's take this very beautiful function. It has the uh, expression uh, in terms of a Q hypergeometric function. And then it has this incredibly simple, actually deceptively simple uh, Q expansions. And uh, its shadow is a linear combination of, uh, of, uh, of the theta function, unary theta function we talked about of the way three hot. And then 42 is this uh, rescaling of the lattice factor that we say we already call uh, uh, the, the index of the theta function. Okay. And this prefactor is a Jacobi symbol, which is, gives you plus or minus one or zero. Okay. So that's uh, the example. And uh, in fact, I need to stress that uh, mock module forms and full theta function, they're in some sense the most, the very uh, banal uh, examples of quantum module forms. And then uh, out there, there's a wide range of more exotic and more, even more interesting and involved examples of quantum module forms, um, which should also be very interesting in the current context, but I won't be able to talk about them. Okay, so questions about uh, this quantum module forms? I think no one has sent one yet, although maybe pause for just a second and see if anyone uh, uh, has one to send. Well, I have one actually, just to be sure that uh, uh, I understood how, how the story works. You said that you know, for example, these false data functions are example of are examples of um, uh, quantum modular forms. Was I supposed to understand that you do this procedure of expanding it around each cusp to get the the quantum modular form? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank you. You you you, you take the radial limit. That's always what they have to do. In that case. Ah, and now we have one question. The question is, does hat f need to be an eigenfunction of the Laplacian? Eigenfunction of the Laplacian. Um, yeah, so f, f hat is what if you want some kind of mass form, and indeed it's an eigen, yeah, it's an eigenfunction of some kind of a Laplacian like operator. But that, that, that follows from the definition. Good, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So now I tell you what these objects are on a module forms, and I'll quickly tell you uh, how we should understand uh, Z hat as, as three manifold invariants. 
And uh, I'm going to start with the mathematical definition, which uh, the version I'm talking about applies to uh, graph manifolds um, of some type, so plumbing or plumped free manifolds. So this is determined, this, this manifold is determined by a, a weighted graph, namely to each uh, a vertex of the graph you associate with the weight, and not to be confused with the weight of the modern form, but it's a, an, an integer. Okay. And uh, there are different uh, equivalent ways to uh, describe this data. And uh, one will be in terms of the adjacency matrix. And so uh, you put a one if to, uh, if, if there's an edge connecting two vertices and then uh, you put the weight at the diagonal, okay? So the size is determined by the number of vertices, obviously. And another one is the frame length and then you just connect the link and uh, when there's an edge connecting the, the dots and then the weight will determine the, uh, the frame length. And then the plot manifolds, you can think about them as uh, uh, obtained by uh, uh, surgery along uh, this frame link. And it has a very tractable uh, property that uh, the first integral uh, uh, homology is just given by the coprinal of uh, uh, the adjacency matrix here. Okay, so uh, given such uh, a data, mm, let's, well, uh, just define uh, what this Z has should be. And uh, to define this, I need another restriction, namely the adjacency matrix should be uh, negative definite. And uh, because in this way, I can write down a theta function. Well, the lattice is just uh, has the size as, as the dimension that's given again by the number of vertices. And, uh, and uh, as usual, you need to specify some uh, theta for the theta function in, 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 in here. Uh, this label A will be a label an element of the co-kernel, okay? So then you define the theta function as usual and the negative uh, definite uh, signature requirement comes from the fact that you want your Q-series uh, to converge inside a unit is square on a file plane. So that's, you, so it cannot have the wrong sign. So once the theta function is, uh, is defined, you just, uh, put it in a contour integral together with a important prefactor. So uh, of this Z, okay, there are as many Z, this chemical potential as number of, um, of vertices. I hope that is clear. And then this uh, factor is raised to the power by two minus degree of V. The degree of V of vertex is just counting how many edges that's emanating from the uh, vertex. And doing this contour integral basically is taking the constant term in the Z expansion, right, of this uh, uh, dressed up uh, theta function. So that's uh, a rather simple definition. So uh, some remarks. First, uh, you can prove that this is indeed uh, invariant. For instance, uh, different uh, graphs connected by Kirby moves will give you the same manifold. Uh, manifolds, and then you can show that indeed from this point of view, this definition makes sense. And uh, moreover, you actually get a set of Q invariants for giving three manifolds, and this set is um, the co kernel of the adjacency matrix, which is, um, as we said, um, the same as a set to the uh, H1 of the three manifold. And then, which is the same as the set, uh, as the number of uh, the set of in equivalent SU2 abelian flat connections up to uh, uh, Z2 wire group action. And then uh, the next remark is what I said uh, we need uh, negative definiteness uh, uh, on the adjacency matrix. So that's uh, the theta function, and as a result, also Z hats converges. Uh, in the Plane. And then the last remark is that you can quite easily show that up to uh, a, a rational power of Q that I'll be uh, rather careless about throughout the talk, it is uh, a Q series with uh, integral coefficients. Okay. So a nice example with this plumbing graph. 
So the corresponding uh, 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 three manifolds is the so-called Briscoe sphere given by the intersection between S S5 and this hypersurface in the in C3. So if you just uh, throw in the numbers and uh, in the definition, uh, what you get is that uh, this uh, object is actually uh, a full theta function. And moreover, it's actually pretty cool that this is the, the, the Eichler integral of the shadow of the uh, uh, Ramanujan's mock uh, theta function. And uh, uh, that's just one example. Okay, so next, uh, something else about these z-hats, uh, why are they defined in this way in terms of theta function and so on? Well, a um, an, an, an big, I think, uh, reason to define it in this way is the relation to Trent-Simons and the known expression for Trent-Simons manifolds for these graph, uh, uh, Trent-Simons invariants for these graph manifolds. So um, given, uh, well, so we always have the Simons uh, partition function as a topological invariance. And the question is, uh, can we go from this, which is a function defined only on the integers to a Q series, which is you know, a function defined on the unit square R bar, if you want. And then the idea is indeed that there should be such a Q series. When you take the radial limits, you recover uh, the transcendence invariant. So this is not the new idea. This is uh, closely related to the previous work uh, by Habiro, for instance, uh, the universal WRT invariant. And it's also very uh, important to note that uh, the, this requirement, so the requirement that the radial limit gives you the transcendence is definitely not sufficient to, put, to fix the Q series. For instance, you can add or subtract the cusp form and then you'll still get the same radial limits. For instance, if you can add uh, delta, which is eta to the 24th power, for instance, just to make many more things you can do. So this is not sufficient. And then instead, well, this set of Q series, uh, Z hats, uh, indeed, uh, it's uh, related to Chen Simons by taking the radial limit. But uh, we also have to sum over these actual indices in a smart way, right? Because Chen Simons doesn't have an actual label as it is. And then indeed, you, there's some way of summing it up that's very interesting, and, uh, but I won't talk too much about. We'll see some examples later. OK, so um, that's fine. That it's a, there's a relation to Simons, but where could it actually come from? Well, and the an idea is the 3D, 3D correspondence. So um, when you compatify the 360 theory on the three manifolds, and uh, you get um, uh, 3D theory, uh, with supersymmetry. And the idea is that uh, you can compute such a half index of such a theory. And then on this um, non compact space time, so you have to specify the boundary condition. And the supersymmetric uh, preserving boundary condition then uh, is corresponds to the abelian flat connections. So uh, in this uh, sense, uh, you're uh, computing a half index of the. 3D theory. Or you can, from, um, okay, and from this point of view, uh, you might expect some kind of residual modularity because you're computing a two dimensional CFD uh, coupled to a 3D bulk theory. And if the 3D bulk theory is somewhat uh, trivial in some sense, then, then you might see some modularity. Or another uh, way to see this is uh, from the point of view of a boundary vertex algebra. So this, um, um, in the holomorphic twist of the 3D uh, n equals two theory, the local operators on the boundary conditions that are uh, co that's consistent with the twist has the structure of a vertex algebra whose uh, graded trace will be uh, the same as the half index and hence the z hats. So there's no reason to expect that this vertex algebra should be rational. And um, so 
Jew theorem on modularity wouldn't hold, uh, and we're kind of in the wild, but uh, it's kind of believed that this this still this algebra still has some kind of nice properties, and you still see some kind of modularity. So that's another way to see this, to think about this heuristically at least. So um, that's uh, about uh, these uh, z hats uh, very quickly before I describe the connection between the two. So there was one question uh, about the, the form uh, Jacobi form theta of tau and z that you were building uh, from a from the plumbing graph for the three manifold. The question was, what are the weight and index of that form? Weighted index of this form, the the Jacobi form, this this yeah. this object. Yeah. Weight and index. Yes, okay, yes, the sorry. weight uh, weight will be again by half of the dimension, and the uh, index will be uh, then given by the dimension. Well, it's a, it's a little bit complicated because I mean, this this is a vector. So um, this is a really a higher dimensional Jacobi form. But the weight is certainly half of the dimension and then the index, well, then it's a vector balancing. Okay. Uh, good. We have another question. Uh, in the picture of the 3D, 3D correspondence, uh, why should it be that your hat Z is the trend Simons partition function after summing over A? I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 um, one can talk about like maybe some like M theory interpretation of this formula. But I mean, the, 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 I, the quick question is, I don't know of a proof. Thank you. OK, so now finally, I can describe uh, how the two things uh, seem to be related to each other. And then just some uh, little advertisement. If you don't care about quantum module form and whatnot, uh, there's still some reason why you might want to care about the relation. Um, first, uh, as we will see, uh, if you uh, only care about computing z hat and having uh, having some kind of quantum modularity as usual, in the case of strict modularity, that actually helps you to uh, determine the Q invariance. And then it also leads to new ways and easy ways to retrieve uh, to retrieve topological information on the three manifolds. I don't know if I have time to talk about. It. And then last but not least, um, it is, this is going to give hints about physical theories because uh, you from the type of quantum modularities, then you get to the type of VOAs that's associated to it, and, and that gives you clearly um, hints about the boundary algebra. <laughs> okay. So uh, I should also say that this is definitely not the first time that people think about the relation between quantum module forms and, and, topo and low dimension topology. And there is very interesting uh, ongoing work and past work on the relation, for instance, between the shy invariants of knots and uh, quantum module forms. Uh, so, um, that's also um, very nice work that you guys should uh, follow if you want. OK, so um, I'll start uh, by talking about a, a, a full theorem that's actually true. And, then, uh, and, and so this is the simplest example of the connection to quantum module forms, if you want. So um, we. In this example, we just focus on the most tractable family of examples, which uh, are uh, plump manifolds where the plumbing graph is just a three star graph. And then you can prove by manipulating the definition. It's not a, a very a complicated thing. So for any three star graph and with some negativity condition satisfied, and uh, the z hat is always uh, full theta functions of a very particular type. So it's in uh, of this type. So 
So in particular, there exists an integer, which I will call M such that it's just a linear combination of such um, uh, level, uh, uh, sorry, index M uh, definitions, okay? And um, so that's nice. And uh, in fact, four theta functions has been uh, observed to have relation to Chen Simons already in earlier work. And um, so uh, how does it go? Well, and uh, what does the quantum modularity mean in this case? And this case is sufficiently uh, easy that you can actually connect things uh, that connect quantum modularity to things you might know from transcendent theory. Namely, we know that uh, four theta functions are quantum modular forms, which implies that z hat is a quantum modular form. So if we take the modular difference and then take the radial limit appropriately, and then this guy has analytic properties. So uh, we know that the trans-Simons invariance, as we said, at level k is uh, basically z hat. Uh, when you take the radial limit, tau goes to one over k. And then you take this gamma, this modular transformation to be the S transformation, then you get to the fact that it's basically uh, uh, z hat evaluated at minus k uh, plus some perturbative series in one over k. So in this context, you can see that uh, evaluated at minus k, it actually gives you the set of point contributions from SO2c, so complex transimon connections. And the perturbative series in k are the perturbative series around uh, the set of points. So uh, in this way, because you have very tractable for theta function, so you can actually assemble these informations very quickly from uh, the property of four theta functions. And another nice observation about this uh, false theorem is that uh, four theta functions also have appeared uh, previously in, 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 in the physics literature as characters of log VOAs. And log VOAs are, um, VOAs that are not rational, they contain modules that are not decomposable into irreducibles. But um, the log VOAs that are involved here, they are uh, actually still very simple, as we will see in a minute. So they offer a nice playground to study the mathematical properties of non rational vertex algebras. For instance, how this true theorem gets modified and the Ferlina uh, formula, how that gets modified and so on and so forth. So what are the uh, uh, log VOAs that's, uh, that's, uh, that's playing a role here? This is the so-called one from M models. Um, so um, basically you take uh, a positive integer M and you have the free boson and then define some stress energy tensor and as usual you can define the screening charge. And then you also consider a lattice VOA where the lattice is, the, again, this rescaled Z, okay? And, and um, given these objects, then the tri so-called triplet one from M algebra is just the kernel of this screening operator on the lattice VOA. And the singlet will be uh, um, the, Again, the kernel of the screening, but on the Heisenberg algebra, or if you from the lattice VOA point of view, the the the, the zero charge uh, box space. So it's summarized in this diagram. And the triplet algebra has uh, a few numbers of two n, in, to be more precise, of irreducibles, and they have this uh, pretty simple uh, graded character. And the observation is that if you normalize the z hat invariance with uh, the eta function obviously coming from the free boson, then um, you into do this, perform this integration uh, on every node except for the central node, the only node with degree three, then uh, you can rewrite this uh, 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 z hat invariance as taking the uh, uh, constant term from the triplet uh, algebra, triplet one comma m algebra characters. 
And this is by definition singlet one for many of these characters because, well, triplet and singlet, you can also uh, obtain it by gauging a new one. And uh, this is given indeed by just the sum of uh, four theta functions. So that's the observation how uh, uh, log VOA characters play a role here. So clearly, uh, because the Z hat is itself uh, um, uh, the greater trace of the boundary algebra, so the, clearly these log VOA should be closely related to the algebra. Uh, although uh, I haven't seen a concrete example of you know what these objects all are, like including the boundary algebra and how they are related. So that's the sim simplest example that I talked about. Are there questions? I haven't seen any. Okay, great. Ah, uh, two questions. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, can your graph have a loop as well? The what? The graph. What? What yes. does what? Okay, graph had a loop. No. I think the plumbing graph. Here. Hmm? I think it's a question about the, the plumbing graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the answer is no, I won't be considering graph with loops. And another question is what was what was the logic here? Did you start with the answer and observe the relation to characters? Yeah. And is there an understanding in the M theory geometry associated to the in, in the M theory geometry associated to 3D 3D correspondence? of the origin of this log VOA? Yeah, I think the best, my best guess would be uh, uh, the boundary algebra but, uh, of the, yeah, of the 3D supersymmetric theory. But that's just my personal guess. Thank you. Oh, one more question. Is the boundary algebra a log VOA? Again, I haven't seen this boundary algebra being worked out um, for the same uh, three manifolds. But I mean, you would guess so, that's the thing. But it's not quite on the nose for most of the examples I, I described, because as you see, you actually get a z-linear combination of, uh, of, uh, of uh, characters. So you might guess that it should be some kind of extension of the log simple log VOA I talked about, such that um, you know the algebra of that, uh, the, the representation of that extended thing decomposed into you know, a, a linear combination of this simple algebra that I talked about. Ah, and, and sorry, just one more. Uh, and what about the work of Casalo, Giotto, Dimofte? Did they say anything about the relation between the boundary algebra and some log VOA? So you mean, uh, uh, then, then, then we have some authors here, which uh, they should, um, where, did, <laughs> where did I put this citation? I see we have some authors. Huh? So yeah, Tudor is shaking. To be shaking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some work between the relation to the like uh, N, N equals four theory and log VLA. Okay, Good, so can you. I? So um, the next uh, part. So after a true fault theorem, I'm going to talk about a mock force conjecture. Um, so um, here's a puzzle. So we say that what you have z hat, and then you take the radial limit, you get to the trip Simons, and but we also know that if you flip the orientation of the three manifolds, it's like flipping the uh, flipping the level of the trip Simons. So if I'm just uh, super naive, I put these uh, things together and had the different variables get identified, and I'll get to the conclusion that 
uh, if I flip the orientation, I have to flip tau to minus tau. Uh, but that's like terrible, right? Because uh, uh, this uh, operation doesn't uh, does not preserve the upper half plane. So ah, I don't know what I'm doing in the lower half plane, and uh, how do I define such a thing, right? Um, um, so especially like you, you want to have like a function that's, you know, sort of have this behavior uh, that they give the kind of the mirror uh, transignments, almost the same function, you just flip k and minus k, but almost the same function on the, on the rationals, right, on the one over k, but I mean, one, yeah. They, 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 they live in different worlds. So what could this guy be? So um, you go back to your definition and then you get really uh, uh, hopeless because uh, if you do this and what you see is that you don't even get anything, right? Like the lattice, uh, the lattice uh, uh, theta function just blows up in front of your face. There's uh, naively nothing you can do about it. Um, so what can you do? But uh, there are miracles uh, in life. So let's take, for instance, our favorite uh, example. And uh, we know that this is uh, the answer is a full theta function of very simple computation. And is the isolated integral of the shadow of a very beautiful mock theta function of Raman and John. And it has an even nicer property or another nice property, namely it can be written as a Q-hypergeometric geometric series. And if you stare at a Q-hypergeometric geometric series and it has a funny property that it converges both inside and outside the unit circle, although certainly not on the unit circle, you see like their poses through all rational all roots of unity in terms of q. And uh, what's this uh, funny function outside the unit circle? You, you uh, expand this and then uh, you compare it to Ramanujan's mock data function. And then uh, what you will see is that uh, this is indeed uh, the Ramanujan's data function on the other side. So in this case, there is a function that's defined uh, for minus tau. So namely, you can, uh, the Q hypergeometric series defines function on both the upper and the lower half plane. On the one side, you have a full theta function, which is the actual integral of the shadow of this uh, mock theta function. On the other side is the full theta function. Uh, the, sorry, the mock theta function itself. So uh, that's uh, fun. And then they lead to the definition of the same quantum modular form when you take the uh, uh, radial limit carefully. So then if you're just uh, very silly and very naive, then you would just conjecture that if I flip the orientation of my Brisbane sphere, this three manifold, then the uh, Q uh, series invariant is given by the mock data function. That's all very nice if it's true, because I'm sure Ramanu Jones won't be thinking about uh, three manifolds when he wrote down these functions. And uh, so, but I mean, it's, as I said, it all uh, depends on certain miracles, um, which is not, that satisfying, but in fact, there is a more general phenomenon. Namely, if you take the Rademacher sum, which is a regularized sum over modular images, and which is a great way to produce uh, modular forms if you want, and then you get the mock modular forms on one side, and then you do this, you perform this same Rademacher sum at the other side, you get indeed the shadow the isolated integral of the shadow, that's a mouthful, but in fact, it's very easy. Um, so you have a mock theta function that's being computed by pre 
computing such a random of a sum, and then it has a certain shadow. And then on the other side, the function will be determined by the shadow itself. And that's the false theta function in this case. Okay. So uh, more generally, you can uh, make a conjecture, namely, if a certain three manifolds it has the Q series invariance being given by a full theta function, then uh, if you flip the orientation, you go to the other side, then the Z Q series invariance should be given by a mock module form, a mock theta function. With the shadow that's uh, with a shadow that's given by this uh, this uh, theta function that controls that underlies the full theta function okay, that you started with, and uh, uh, admittedly this is rather a bold conjecture because uh, it has no uh, topology, no physics in it. I mean, it's just purely just on. From, you're just guessing the answer from modularity itself, okay? So uh, that's why it's, it was uh, extremely pleasing uh, because when uh, in this paper, uh, Kukov and Manolescu defined another uh, z-hat type invariance for uh, not complement, and they also give you an, a, a surgery formula. And using the description of a flipped Brisbane sphere as a dense surgery on the, com the complement of the figure A knots, they actually computed the Z hat invariance and indeed get the answer that's given by the mock modularity. So that's very nice because uh, it's the opposite uh, of our conjecture. They use nothing about modularity in their computation. So, but they gave the same answer. That's nice, uh, but again, it relies on the specific description of this three manifold in terms of not complement surgery and surgeries on not complements. Is there a way to obtain a mock answer from a more direct definition? That's a question you would like to ask. And uh, let's go back to the problem with the definition. Uh -huh of the theta functions. Uh, as I said, it looks pretty hopeless. Uh, but in fact, uh, Zweigers also, uh, uh, pr also proposed a way uh, to deal with such functions. Namely, uh, you just regularize uh, uh, the theta function if you have an indefinite uh, signature uh, lattice. So uh, how do you regularize it? Well, it's actually pretty funny, okay. So, uh, okay, the hand-drawn uh, uh, annotation is missed on this computer, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk you through that. So um, he proposed to include the regularization factor in the sum in, of the theta function, which what it does is to actually to restrict the sum to a cone, appropriate chosen cone, that's space-like in this uh, lattice of indefinite signature. So then um, V is this uh, region inside this space-like cone, okay, V in this form, second, second equation here. So then, of course, you don't get uh, divergences anymore. And he also shown that if you choose this cone, uh, choose this space-like cone uh, uh, wisely, then the resulting function actually have a mock modularity property. So a proposal is that we just simply uh, flip the orientation and replace the theta function in the definition with a regularized version of theta function. And then you can show that indeed uh, these are mock theta functions that you obtain from this uh, modified definition. So now you also uh, have a definition in principle for uh, plumb manifolds. So you can take off the uh, negative definiteness uh, condition in this way. But I should say, so this is uh, work 
with my student, uh, Gabriel Skoroy, but I should say that before we can find a physical interpretation of this regularization, this uh, still looks a little bit uh, mysterious, Alex, to me. So what we have seen is like we've seen explicit examples and, uh, and uh, but then the question is, what's the physical meaning of the regularization, but it's uh, pretty exciting that mo module forms have uh, interpretation that's three manifold invariants. So uh, I'm a bit short on, on time uh, because of the interruption with my laptop, but I do have a next part. So maybe uh, how should we do it? Maybe we skip the questions till the very end or? All right, we could hold the questions till the end, yeah. Yeah, if time is not the concern, I can definitely uh, take questions right now, but just I don't want to be too much. Away. Well, since we started uh, a bit late, we can also go uh, a bit, say, uh, how much longer do you think you have? Uh, maybe uh, five more minutes, six more minutes. Oh, yeah, let's just do that. Just go to the end and then we'll do the questions at the end. Okay. So the last part uh, before I conclude uh, is uh, to try to answer the question, like that's all very nice, log VOA for theta function, but I mean, it only uh, surrounds a, a very specific type of uh, three manifolds and then uh, maybe it's just a coincidence. And uh, so let's do some more complicated examples. So uh, let's start from a log VOA point of view. So one comma n algebra, as I said, is almost the simplest, among the simplest type of uh, log VOAs, and it has many uh, generalization. One generalization is like you can define a one comma m algebra for uh, any Lie algebra uh, G, and uh, thanks for, for instance, papers by uh, Feiging and Tipuning. I didn't put many uh, references on log VOAs, but please, uh, 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 please uh, look at uh, our paper when it comes out. It will have all the references. And uh, so, how do we do that? Instead of one free boson, you have R free bosons, and R is a rank of the Lie algebra. And instead of the rescaled uh, one dimensional lattice, you actually rescale the root lattice and the rest goes pretty much uh, analogously. And then from the M theory origin of C hat, namely from the M fibering theory, it's clear that there is a higher rank generalization and you can also write down a higher rank version of the mathematical uh, definition in terms of a higher rank theta function and so on. So if you do that and do the computation and again, like put in the free boson uh, factor. And then you see that again, uh, it's this, 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 this thing, this Z hat invariance is basically, you take the uh, uh, constant part of, in terms of the chemical potential associated with the central node when you have a three star graph of the triplet log VOA corresponding to the Lie algebra G. And hence the connection to the singlet VOA also uh, holds up in that case. Okay, so that's the high rank uh, uh, generalization of the story. And you also, there's another uh, generalization instead of one comma M, you can have like both integers being uh, non being not equal to one. So in this case, you famously have the minimal model corresponding. And, uh, and you can think about the minimal model as the cohomology of the screening operator and the log version of it and that is given by the kernel of the screening operator if you want. So in any ways, there is such a, a, a log VOA that you can define. And in a pretty similar way, they seem to correspond to uh, a more complicated graph, slightly more complicated, namely a four from uh, star graph and this correspondence between the Q invariance and the VOA. So what about quantum modularity of these things? Well, then we have to go deeper. 
So um, the definition of quantum mind forms that I talked about is the so-called depth one. So it says like the, the it says that uh, the modular difference of this function defined on Q have some properties of an analytic and, and uh, have some analytic properties okay, everywhere. And then depth n, this definition is works recursively, says that uh, a function um, the rational is a, is a depth n uh, quantum modular form. If the modular difference is a sum of quantum modular forms of depth, depth less than n, and multiply by some real analytic functions if you want. So uh, the role of the Eichler integral is replaced in the depth n quantum modular form by an iterated integral, okay, in a way that you might imagine. So, um, for instance, uh, 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 the, the quantum modularity of these characters are still like pretty much uh, being studied. Uh, not everything's clear, but it's been proven for the A2 case that uh, the characters is a depth two quantum modular form. And then uh, how about these uh, PP prime models and, uh, and the four corresponding four, uh, uh, four a star uh, graph uh, invariant? So these turn out to be a sum of quantum modular forms of mixed weights. So uh, as you can see, the quantum modularity gets more involved, but it's uh, there. Okay, so that's the result of this uh, investigation. So um, I would just uh, quickly conclude and we can take questions. Um, so it's clear that there is a story there. It's just the beginning. For instance, uh, how about a mathematical definition for more families of three manifolds, not just the graph manifolds. And as I mentioned, for instance, a group of them on the last school had paper last year and they talked about the not complements. And uh, as uh, was discussed earlier, what about, can we, you know, really write down the boundary algebra of, uh, of this, <coughs> of the, <coughs> of the 3D angles two theory and uh, really uh, demystify the appearance of the log VOA in this way or other ways. And uh, I should again stress that mock and false are exceptionally simple examples of quantum modular forms. They are even a little bit boring from their point of view since they have been they could be described within other framework. Uh, we don't need a priori quantum modularity to describe it. But clearly, quantum modularity is uh, is what connects to the physics and topology of Z hats here. So. We expect much more involved quantum modularity for more general three manifolds, uh, although they won't be mock, they won't be false, they will be something else. So this is, I should mention that this is also a point of view that's been uh, repeatedly uh, uh, stressed by uh, Dalton here. And last, uh, um, I think as data uh, accumulates, we know more and more uh, uh, more precise answer to the question what quantum modularity actually says about uh, physics and topology. So uh, that's it, and thank you very much. And I, I'm sorry for the laptop problem in the beginning. Great. Let's thank the speaker. Uh, thank you very much, Miranda, especially for being up at this crazy time. Um, and yeah, so now we'll take questions with raised hands. So, all right. Our first question from Greg Moore. Uh, hi, Miranda. Hi, Greg. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, what, what, um, what, what was the motivation for writing down this formula for Z hat in terms of a contour integral? Well, uh, and I, I mean, you, I, you, didn't, you didn't derive it from a path integral, right? You, you wrote it down. It must be some inspired guess or something like that. Well, first, uh, this uh, 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 a qualifier is that I didn't re write that paper, right? It's, a, it's, it's written down in the paper uh, by uh, uh, Google uh, 
and and Pavel and Dupe and uh, Broom, right? Um, so you should look at their paper. But uh, a key observation is uh, clearly that uh, uh, Chen Simon's uh, plum manifolds take a very specific form. And uh, and uh, so was it trying to match the semi-classical expansion at large K to you know well, back to, the, 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 to a contour integral? Is that was that the just like just like just for um for many of these manifolds you can write on a Q series and then if you take the uh, radial limit you get the turn time and then level K. You don't even need I think the the, the perturbative series to see that. Okay. So I, I, that's certainly uh, an important part of the motivation. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so I also I also wanted to make a comment. I'm not sure if it's it's related, but the, the, the issue came up in your talk about you know where 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 in physics are we going to see these indefinite theta functions, and so on. And I think you know that. Um, they do appear in quantum corrections to uh, absolutely uh, multiple geometry and, and Boris Peeling and you know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. about that. And they, they yeah. also appear in um, supersymmetric, twisted supersymmetric theories on four manifolds. Mm -hmm. if, you look at the, if you look at the physical partition function on the Coulomb branch, it was known forever that you have um, some kind of um, in depth, some kind of um, Siegel Narain theta function in, from the mm -hmm. Abelian gauge fields. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a recent observation, or relatively recent observation, going back to a nice paper of George Corpus and Jan Menscott. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a total derivative of yeah. one of these indefinite theta functions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do the U plane integral mm -hmm. very naturally led to taking limits uh, uh. Of definite theta functions going down to cusps, the strong cusps, coupling cusps. So I just want to put that, put that out there because um, it's because it starts with a physical question using physical methods and, and is ending up with at least some of some of the mathematical elements in your story. So I have no idea what how it would be related to three manifold invariants and so on. Right. So thank you very much for your comments. And indeed, um, maybe uh, I was a little bit too much downplaying uh, our work um, as being like completely like from guessing from a modular point of view, just to uh, make the point. But uh, um, actually, due to these, indeed, the, these, these other work uh, of uh, indefinite theta functions appearing in physics, I'm pretty confident that there is a story like that there. It's just like it hasn't been developed so far. Yeah, thank you. Well, right. someone ha somehow one has to get from these twisted supersymmetric gauge theories to the turn Simon's theories. Sorry, what, what was that? Uh, was in that order that? to make this connection, and I, if this, if what I'm pointing out is actually relevant to your story, right? One wants to go, uh, wants yeah. to start with supersymmetric um, by, field theory, and then have some chain of reasoning going leading to turn Simon's theory. Yeah, that would certainly be super interesting to work out. I think that would be great. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We have another question from Sherry R. Sikander. Hi, um, I think uh, Greg might have alluded to this as well. So um, does the quantum modular form pick up the semi-classical limit of uh, the Chern-Simons invariance? So if we take the limit as k goes to infinity? Uh, right, so um, I think I had the slide on this in the first part. <clears throat> Yeah, here indeed. So right. um, in this case, the uh, uh, the large K uh, expansion is in the modular difference in in terms of quantum modularity. I don't know if that uh, uh, replies your question, answers your question. 
Thanks. No, I mean, I was just looking if uh, some um, topological or geometric invariance of uh, the three manifold can actually be computed from the quantum modular form side. Yeah, so so this is the, for instance, what's called the, related to the what's called the Osaki series. I mean, the perturbative, the perturbative uh, expansion yeah. is is a topological invariance of the three manifolds. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. And this, uh, if you look at uh, our paper in 2018, we have like uh, a lot of uh, examples uh, worked out in great details to show you how to use uh, quantum modularity to like very cheaply compute the properties of flat connection, the list of flat connections, as well as these uh, series. With this video, okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, I think we have another question from Jackson Van Dyke. Jackson, are you there? Oh, sorry, I don't have the question. No. Um, I mute. couldn't hear that very well. No, I couldn't. I mean, Jackson is muted. Yeah. Oh, says I don't have a question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, how about? Uh, from Muhammad Shepper. Oh, the clapping hand is not a raised hand. Ah, 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 ah. I've misunderstood this all this time. Very good. Um, in that case, uh, I'll wait one more second to see if there are any more uh, uh, raised hands. All right, uh, I think that's it. So thank you very much, Miranda. Uh, let's thank, thank the speaker you. again. Thank you. All right, so that brings to an end uh, the fourth meeting of this colloquium. Uh, the next talk will be in two weeks on Monday, June 1st, and the speaker will be Davide Gaiotto. So I look forward to seeing you then. Um, if by chance you've come here without being on our mailing list, I encourage you to visit the webpage um, and sign up uh, for the mailing list uh, and have a great day. <laughs>